The delta opioid receptor, also known as delta opioid receptor or simply delta receptor, abbreviated DOR or DOP, is an inhibitory 7 transmembrane G protein coupled receptor coupled to the G protein G slash G0 and has encephalines as its endogenous ligands. The regions of the brain where the delta opioid receptor is largely expressed vary from species model to species model. In humans, the delta opioid receptor is most heavily expressed in the basal ganglia and neocortical regions of the brain. The endogenous system of opioid receptors is well known for its analgesic potential, however, the exact role of delta opioid receptor activation in pain modulation is largely up for debate. This also depends on the model at hand since receptor activity is known to change from species to species. Activation of delta receptors produces analgesia, perhaps as significant potentiators of mu opioid receptor agonists. However, it seems like delta agonism provides heavy potentiation to any mu agonism. Therefore, even selective mu agonists can cause analgesia under the right conditions, whereas under others can cause none whatsoever. It is also suggested however that the pain modulated by the mu opioid receptor and that modulated by the delta opioid receptor are distinct types, with the assertion that DOR modulates the nociception of chronic pain, while more modulates acute pain. Evidence for whether delta agonists produce respiratory depression is mixed, high doses of the delta agonist peptide produced respiratory depression in sheep. But in tests on mice the non-peptide delta agonist SNC80 produced respiratory depression only at the very high dose of 40 mg kg. In contrast both the peptide delta agonist deltorphin 2 and the non-peptide delta agonist B.W. 373U86 actually stimulated respiratory function and blocked the respiratory depressant effect of the potent mu opioid agonist alfentanil without affecting pain relief. It thus seems likely that while delta opioid agonists can produce respiratory depression at very high doses, at lower doses they have the opposite effect, a fact that may make mixed mu slash delta agonists such as DPI 3290 potentially very useful drugs that might be much safer than the mu agonists currently used for pain relief. Many delta agonists may also cause seizures at high doses, although not all delta agonists produce this effect. Of additional interest is the potential for delta agonists to be developed for use as a novel class of antidepressant drugs, following robust evidence of both antidepressant effects and also upregulation of BDNF production in the brain in animal models of depression. These antidepressant effects have been linked to endogenous opioid peptides acting at delta and mu opioid receptors, and so can also be produced by encephalinous inhibitors such as RB101. However, in human models the data for antidepressant effects remains inconclusive. In the 2008 Phase II clinical trial by AstraZeneca, NCT00759395, 15 patients were treated with the selective delta agonist AZD2327. The results showed no significant effect on mood suggesting that delta opioid receptor modulation might not participate in the regulation of mood in humans. However, doses were administered at low doses and the pharmacological data also remains inconclusive. Further trials are required. Another interesting aspect of delta opioid receptor function is the suggestion of mu, delta opioid receptor interactions. At the extremes of this suggestion lies the possibility of a mu, delta opioid receptor oligomer. The evidence for this stems from the different binding profiles of typical mu and delta agonists such as morphine and damgo respectively, in cells that co-express both receptors compared to those in cells that express them individually. In addition, work by Fan and co-workers shows the restoration of the binding profiles when distal carboxyl termini are truncated at either receptor, suggesting that the termini play a role in the oligomerization. While this is exciting, rebuttal by the Javich and co-workers suggests the idea of oligomerization may be overplayed. Relying on RET, Javich and co-workers showed that RET signals were more characteristic of random proximity between receptors, rather than an actual bond formation between receptors. Suggesting that discrepancies in binding profiles may be the result of downstream interactions, rather than novel effects due to oligomerization. Nevertheless, co-expression of receptors remains unique and potentially useful in the treatment of mood disorders and pain. Recent work indicates that exogenous ligands that activate the delta receptors mimic the phenomenon known as ischemic preconditioning. Experimentally, if short periods of transient ischemia are induced the downstream tissues are robustly protected if longer duration interruption of the blood supply is then affected. Opiates and opioids with door activity mimic this effect. 
In the RAT model, introduction of door ligands results in significant cardioprotection. Until comparatively recently, there were few pharmacological tools for the study of delta receptors. As a consequence, our understanding of their function is much more limited than those of the other opioid receptors for which selective ligands have long been available. However, there are now several selective delta opioid receptor agonists available, including peptides such as DIP and deltorphin 2 and non-peptide drugs such as SNC80, the more potent B.W. 373 U86, a newer drug DPI-287, which does not produce the problems with convulsions seen with the earlier agents, and the mixed mu, delta agonist DPI-3290, which is a much more potent analgesic than the more highly selective delta agonists. Selective antagonists for the delta receptor are also available, with the best known being the opiate derivative naltrendol. A showing of selective delta opioid ligands. Blue represents a common phenolic moiety, yellow a basic nitrogen, and red a diethyl amide moiety which isn't set in stone, but rather a bulky region that fits into a hydrophobic pocket. Delta opioid receptors have been shown to interact with beta-2 adrenergic receptors, arrestin beta-1 and crasp-1. Thanks for watching.